So there doesn't appear to be anything we can loot here. Apart from Bartle, actually. Ooh, an Iron Grid Axe. So we lose magical power, we lose defense, but we gain physical power. I mean, physical power's everything we're looking for in Morton, so we'll give him this big axe. Studded leather armor will actually make up for the loss in defense we got from that, so that's good. Ren can have the better armor because she's our healer, she needs to stay alive more. And then Sigvard can have a bit of defense from the leftover armor there. Alright then, Sigvard, how'd you end up in the cage? Kim looking for extra pairs of hands, and bandits weren't to be trusted. Wonderful, so you can tell us what we're doing out here. You're never gonna believe it. Yeah, get on with it. No. Something is coming from the north, the first ship in 200 years. I guess where it's gonna land. So, right here, I'm guessing. So part of the premise of this story is that up to the north, there's like a, a fog where nothing comes out of, anything that goes into doesn't come back, it's like a, just a shroud, that entire part of the world just doesn't exist, basically, to these people. And now something's coming out of it, and they call it the Merc there. The visitors must be presumed to pose a threat, the Crown requires us to assess the magnitude thereof. Alright, well, let's go back to the little town, and I guess go to sleep? Now, I was pretty sure that I actually had a staff at this point, so I went back in, and there was like a weapon pile I could loot too, which had a couple hundred gold coins in it. And Sigvard here could actually use this, this wooden staff, which scales much better with magic. So there we go, we'll give him that. So he's now using his weapon two-handed. But that will boost his magic power by a fair bit. And the village is right here. How wonderful to be back. I don't know about you two, but I'm looking forward to the novelty of sleeping lying down. Oh yeah, because he was in the cage, wasn't he? So we'd have had to sleep standing up. And here's the blacksmith. I don't appreciate you got our elder killed, but Reginald says you helped him take care of Bertle. That means you helped all of us. Don't really do weapons, he's a village smith. But he's going to help us with something lying around he's made just for the sake of it. Sure, let's see what you've got. So he's got an axe, a pitchfork, a wooden staff, and a wooden shield. In terms of weapons. He's got leather and chain armor. No accessories, and no miscellaneous items. Well, we're short on armor, so I'm going to take both of these. So we've got raw fish here. I don't know if we can use that for anything. But we can sell the cash of bandit weapons because there's nothing there so let's sell that stuff and buy the armor okay we'll leave it there and i need to check sigvard's staff okay so that's the same one that's in the shop i'm pretty sure yeah it's got the same stats so we don't need to spend any more money on that all right well the only thing we can really do now is get some rest so let's interact with our campfire here let's go to sleep you're up something's wrong what is it Something's going on. Our visitors are about to land. What visitors? A ship. Okay, so... Either we can meet them at the shore, or wait for them in the village. And use the walls as defense. If they're hostile, and we're using the village walls as defense, we're putting the villagers in danger, right? We've already got some of them killed. And realistically, if we meet them at the shore, we don't give them any time to prepare. As soon as they land, they're going to have to fight. So that's probably the best idea. Yeah, Sigford agrees these people aren't fighters. Ren doesn't agree, though. She thinks that the walls are probably our best bet, but I think Sigford has a point there. So either we can head out the front there, or go out the back towards the shore. Now, if you go out the front here, it triggers the cutscene outside the village anywhere. So you have to go out the back if you want to meet them on the shore. So let's see what we've got out here. Do you see it? Oh yeah, I just about see it here. Coming in through the fog. That's a warship. See, it's like a, a Viking longboat. Well, they beached that thing pretty hard. And just out of nowhere, the snow. It's rather ominous. It's even turned the ground 
completely white, just like that. It's quite the party trick. The strangers seem as surprised at the change of weather as everybody else. And so Otto would have thought they would be the ones that did it. Or Moria stands at the head of the group, a particularly impressive axe upon his back. This must be the leader. Identify yourselves. He opens his mouth to speak, but there's no sound. That's kind of weird. He's making Sigvard's eyes water. This is fascinating. Well, if they can't speak, there's only one way it's going to end, right? Let's just deal with it. Alright, so we have the Red Chief, a Redder, a Redder, a Redder Shaman, and a Redder. I don't think this one looks like a healer. That's a, yeah, that's a spear. So the Shaman here is probably the best bet to start with. But Morton probably wants to attack the Chief just to force him into an engagement. And Ren can take on the healer. Sigvard's magic's probably best used on the other shield user here just because it's unavoidable damage. So we bypass the chance that they have to block. And we're ready to go. Okay, so that shaman definitely was a healer. Ren's taken two side attacks, which isn't good. Yeah, Ren and Morton are kind of hurt. So if we get a switch back onto the chief, Ren's probably best off healing herself. Oh no, that broke the engagement anywhere. Oh yeah, we'll heal Morton then. He probably needs it the most, if he's uh, engaged with the boss. Wait, did I just pause it? No, I pressed space twice. My bad. Well, the chief has like a slither of health left. But at least that's one of the shield bearers down. Looks like we made the right choice in healing Morton there too, he's taking a ton of damage. The Chief just got healed, but Morton should be able to take him out next turn. I, okay, Morton does not have health left. He has a tiny bit now because of Ren's healing ability. She has like a residual healing effect. So who's law that um, Sigvard can take out? Probably the chief, right? Unless we take the chief out, Morton's not going to survive this turn, I don't think. Yeah, down he goes. Alright, thankfully not everybody's aiming at Morton. Alright, the Shaman's still alive, which I really need to do something about. So we're going to switch back onto him. Ren needs to heal herself. Sigvard... Yeah, just on the Shaman then, just in case um, Morton doesn't take him down. Okay, Shaman down. And Ren is taking a ton of damage here, she's going to have to heal herself again. I think Sigvard could probably take out this red with another set of sparks. So we're going to get Morton to engage this one here. Ren, again, heal yourself. And Sigvard, take out the Spear Wilder. Oh, 
Okay, decent damage from Molten, and yeah, Sigvod took out the uh, spear user there. Alright, this should be pretty much game then. We'll get a melee attack in with Ren just in case she's going to learn an ability here. Oh, they averted it, okay. But that means Molten gets the side attack, which means much more damage for us. And that should be, yep, a victory. So Morton's unlocked the ability of Reach, and has changed class to a warrior, and Sigvart has become a wizard. But everybody got quite the stat bonus. Look at this bonus here on Ren, plus 10. And we've got a Mistborn Large Axe. A heavy battle axe with a blade made of unknown dark metal. Let's see if that's any good for Morton. Reginald's caught up to us. I saw what happened. Why didn't you come and get me? I would have helped. Was that all of them? I doubt our friends made the journey alone. We should check the shore. We're on the shore. So yeah, that realistically would have been like the transition between fighting at the village walls and then coming out here and seeing all of these ships. And that's quite a lot of ships. Let's have a look in their ship before they land, see if we can loot anything. Interact with the boat. Craftsmanship is magical. Okay, so it's been warded, which must be how they got through the fog then, right? Can I not get further onto the beach? I kind of wanted to check that barrel, see if there was anything I could loot, but I guess not. And all of their bodies have turned to skeletons already. Weird. Anyway, Morton, let's check this axe. So we currently have... Six physical power with an air scaling. And this has ten physical power, one strength with an air scaling. So yeah, that's immediately a better weapon. Okay, so all we can do now is head back to the village. Maybe you should gather everybody around, Reginald. Oh yeah, he's the elder now. So he's going to have to announce to everybody what's coming. The good news is that Bottle and his men are gone. And the bad news is that something much worse landed on the doorstep. A large force of invaders is preparing to come ashore. They're not friendly, and they're not to be taken lightly. We can't hope to fight them off, and we can't hope they'll just leave us alone. And everybody has to leave. You've only been home five minutes? Yeah, so they don't respect Reginald as their elder yet. Why should we listen to the likes of you? We've had nothing but trouble since you came slanking back. They're really not buying it. What good listening do to your poor father? I'm not going anywhere on your sis, so... Well, that really did not work. These people look rather official. They're all uniformed. And this is an Inquisitor. He wants to know who's in charge. This matter is now in the hands of the Inquisition. Nobody expected that. What? what are you lot doing here? Where's the army? Where is Brest? What's he got to do with it? He's your commanding officer, is he not? So they actually did a bit of research on us. He's not here, he sent us. And who is the ranking officer among you? Now that's probably Morton, right? Here are your orders. You are to instruct the villagers to return to their homes, lock their doors and windows, and secure yourselves in a similar fashion. Yet while you fight off a whole army of savages on your own? What we do is none of your concern, you have your orders. They're gonna get all of us killed at this rate, aren't they? You'll be quite safe as long as you follow orders, interfere, and you'll doom both yourselves and these people to death. Well, that's everybody in their homes. We didn't actually get to usher people into their houses, that would have been kind of fun, to be honest. So now we're holed up in somebody's house? The Inquisition is party to information us mere mortals are not. And Reginald's in, so this must be Reginald's house. What's happening out there? Everyone's locked in their homes, and there's a crown army on the way. Seems we have little choice but to wait. We might kill some time with a pleasant conversation. And how do we find him in the cave? Uh, well, it was a coincidence. Pictured a rather more heroic end for myself than rotting in a cage. Speaking of which, did you notice anything strange? 
Uh, yeah, well, it was snowing everywhere. Snow, evaporating corpses, all manner of wonders. Ren's tired. And has sprinted off in the general direction of a bed. Okay, that's that, I guess. I think we might all benefit from a snooze. Reginald doesn't want to sleep, but he didn't sleep yesterday either, did he? Oh no, that was the day before that his father died. He'll have slept last night. And now he's first through that chair and sat himself down. I wonder if there's anything for me to steal, actually. What's in the desk? Coins, mender's kits, and a letter from Reginald. Which is a letter to his father. Well, I'll take all of that. And this mender's kit I will give to... Sigvard, I think. So, Morton's the only person who can't heal in our party right now. Ren has her healing abilities, and Sigvard can now use the mender's kit to give us a little bit of health. In an emergency. Ren is fast asleep. Actually sinking through the bed, but that's fine. We can't get back outside. Nobody has anything to say to me, so I guess we just go to sleep. Ren's woken us up. Do you smell that? I can hear crackling. The whole room is suddenly wide awake. Something's burning. It's very orange outside. Okay, it's us that's burning. What the hell indeed, Reginald? Quickly, the back door. And now the back door's on fire. Only a highly skilled mage. Oh, so it's a magical fire. There must be some mistake. Well, this is not the time. We need to leave. Use a spell to blast the door open. I'm not sure adding explosions to the mix is a good idea. Let's see about getting out of here. He's muttering under his breath. So he's got a spell or something, has he? Are you praying? No, he's reminiscing. Well, hurry up and cast whatever you're going to cast. That's your plan, killing us quicker. Ah, yeah, because he's making wind, so it's just going to fan the fire. But no, he's making snow. So he's pretty much just copying the trick he learned from the raiders then, is he? Everybody piles through the door. And that apparently exhausted Sigvard quite a bit. Well, um... Everyone's looking quite toasty. The village is an inferno. Flames leap from the sky onto every rooftop. And there's just a couple charred corpses around. None of the villagers made it out. We need to hurry. Reginald wants to go back in and get everybody else out. But yeah, it's definitely too late. No. They're burning alive in there. I don't think they're alive anymore. Yeah, exactly, Sigvard. So Ren's not going to let Reginald go in. And we have to get out of her. She gets quite physical very quickly, does our Ren, doesn't she? If you die, there'll be no one left to put this right. You're coming with me. Okay, so we've got to leave. At least caring for the crops has survived. So we can't go through the village out the front. We have to go out the back. Yeah, out to the shore there. Alright, let's get out of here. Leaving the burning village behind, the party emerge breathless on the shore. And the birds are still coming. Alright, enough. Let's go. We need to find Brist and tell them what happened here. There's no one left to save. We're going south. So let's have a think. What would the Inquisition have actually gained by burning the village? Well, if they're Vikings, they'll have come here to raid, right? So the best thing that they can hope for is to destroy the village. That means there's nothing here to raid, no food to take, so they're forced to be funneled south. Yeah, so when they land, they have to go south to find food or whatever. Wait, won't the fisherman still be alive out here? Yeah, the fisherman's house isn't on fire. He's locked his door, though. He's got a book here. Yeah, so the fisherman would have survived realistically, right? He's not going to fare so good once those Vikings land, but... For the time being, at least, he should still be alive. Back the way we came, then, is it? We're not going around the mountains. That would take weeks. Somebody's coming. There's a group of men coming. Sounds like a military unit. The cavalry just in the nick of time. 
And yeah, we do need to hide. They just tried to kill us. They're not going to be happy to see us. The Inquisition work for the Crown. We can't be too careful. And there's a squad of soldiers led by an Inquisitor. Another Inquisitor. Lucky we hit. The soldiers look pretty fresh. And we pass through an abandoned fortress on the way here. So it might not be abandoned anymore. So yeah, that was exactly their plan that I'd assume. If it's going to take weeks to go around the mountain, and there's an abandoned fortress in the middle of the mountains, then the Vikings are going to be forced to filter through the mountain, through the fortress. So by removing the sources of food on the way to the fortress, they're forcing the enemy to come into their most heavily defended position. So do you think the Crown were warned about the invasion? All I know is that we have to find a way through that fortress. We don't have the supplies for anything else. Oh, let's get out of here. Enough speculating about the Vikings, we've got our own lives to think about now. Gotta head back down south. So there's the fortress, it looks like half of it's falling into the cliffs. Looks livelier than last time. All of these people here, they're probably, yeah, refugees. The army must have warned other villagers in the region of the impending threat. Makes a change from burning them alive in their homes? Well, it stops them from getting a base camp right next to their landing position. Reginald's going to go ahead and test the water. Even if they're looking for you, they won't be looking for me. Yeah, what do you think about that, Ren? Might as well play it safe. Okay, but why do you want to do that? Because you helped me, even if things don't go to plan. And he's got nothing to lose, you know. Alright, go for it. If I'm not back by sunset, it'll be because something went wrong. Oh, then Reginald, off you go. There's a little campfire here set up for us and everything. But yeah, that tower on the left there is kind of collapsing. It's sunset, Reginald's not back. So he's gotten trapped then. Something must have happened to him. Or maybe he just ran off and left us. Either way, we'll just have to head on in. Now, is there any treasure on the way in? No, all the question marks are inside the fortress all past it, so... Unfortunately... I don't think we're going to have any chances to pick up any treasure. Well, let's get in there. 